So I, I think the advantage of uh, of this lesson is the um, putting things in stacks and then aligning the stacks like this. Uh, you know, I know mine doesn't. Mine goes all the way to the edge. I'm not sure why the margin is not on there. Did anybody figure that out? Why it, the margin wise? When you go to maybe it's the phone I have. Mm -hmm. Go to the constraint, add new constraint. Yeah. And you click on, see where the arrow is near the zero? Like up, 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 like one of those arrows. Click on one of those arrows. Mm hmm. Well, you have it safe, safe area. I, I thought maybe that helped. Uh huh. And then I tried constraint to margins, and that still didn't work either, I don't think. Or maybe this is what I need. I don't know. I'm going to continue with my artwork going all the way to the edge. I'm not going to stop, okay? So let's continue. So again, uh, uh, we're moving on. They, they actually have a slider for the next example. The third type of question may follow this format. How much do you like this particular food? And then you have a little slider. You could probably think of it in a way to, to use a button or a switch button the answer, but the player might have a better experience if they feel a little more free form. So again, they're going to use a slider. And so with this one again, we can hide this one um, before we put that one on. Again, if you click on, how do I click on that? Where is my, there. If you click on your um, your stack, right here, stack, uh, again, you can hide it by using installed right here. That way you have a blank slate if you remember, that's what we did with the other one, right? So I clicked on the, here again, it's right here. I clicked in the middle there where my uh, alignment was, and I hit it right there. Then we can make a slider. Okay, again, to make a slider, um, uh, it just said you might want to hide just what we did. You can use the stack view to create this interface without having to define very many constraints, which you know, the advantage of the stack view. Similar to the switch approach, begin by adding two labels to the canvas from the object library, then select the click embed in stack and the attributes inspector, and then check the access to the center horizontal alignment to set to fill and distribution set to equal. So again, uh, label down here. So if I just put in label, we're going to put one on one side and then put another one on the other side. And then if you select both of them, you can then embed in a stack view, which is right here, the embed stack view. It squishes them together, but again, you can then say uh, fill, um, fill, what do they want? Horizontal, check the access to set the horizontal, horizontal, and then fill to uh, fill and distribution to equal spacing. So distribution equal spacing. Didn't do much because I don't think we've uh, set constraints yet. Next, drag a slider from the object library onto the canvas. Select the slider and horizontal stack, then embed in stack in the attributes inspector. Check the access to set the vertical alignment distribution set to fill and spacing set to 20. Again, the you can put a slider in by typing slider down here. Drag the slider above. And I'm going to put it in the center. Then... Um, after that, you can go and, and use the, uh, um, set it to vertical. Uh, so um, we're going to embed in stack. So we're going to select both of these. You can drop box or, or shift click on them. And then click the embed in stack, which is this one right here. And then um, in the Attributes Inspector, click the Access to Vertical. So instead of Horizontal, Vertical puts it underneath it. Uh-oh, it put that on top. So if you have a problem like that, you can reorder things over here in the Stack View itself. If you go here, you can actually drag it over here above it like that. And I believe that works. I don't know why it's giving me a red line there. Vertical? No. I thought that would work. Let me try dragging the other one around. So we have label here. 
Maybe if I drag the label underneath it. Okay, but they're not. Oh, you they're in a horizontal stack. That's why I'm missing this up. Okay, hold on. Let me let me undo that. What we want is to drag the whole horizontal stack underneath there, like that. There we go. So again, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you have it over here as a vertical like we have here, to get things to be on top of each other and underneath each other, you can move them around over here. So I moved the horizontal stack underneath the, the slider there. Did you see that? So you can move things around here to see the order that they're in right there. Uh, the next thing, of course, is to... Is to um, add some spacing to that so again uh, if I select the whole stack right here we want a, a vertical um, and then we want align to distribution uh, alignment to alignment and distribution to fill so that's fill that's fill there we go once it's in fill it spaces at the bottom one and then 20 here for spacing so that it's uh, spaced away so these aren't so close. That's the way it is on page uh, 1414. Then, of course, you need to go and give it some constraints. And so the constraints I'm going to give it, of course, will be vertical. We're going to go vertical center, um, which will be here, vertical. And then over here, we're going to put 0, 0. And they go out to the edge. So, um, and then we got to put a button on there, as you can see. Um, we need to put a button in there uh, for the submit answer. Oh, and then we, we should have put the button in there first, right? Whatever, let's put the button in there. Again, I'm going to put a button in there. And it'll say submit answer. Submit answer. And then uh, to put it inside of the stack, you can actually drag it here and put it in there like that. So again, if you didn't embed it, I moved it inside. So get used to thinking of this over here uh, as a way that you can move things inside of the stack and arrange them. You notice I put the button on there. It wasn't originally in the stack. But then I actually dragged it into the stack. You can drag things around inside here and move them around so that they're in the group that you want. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. Before you move on, you'll need to re-enable the stack views that you uninstalled during the building process. In this document online, select each stack view and then select the install checkbox and attributes. Again, you don't need to try and select anything here. You just select everything over here. And then again, over here is where you can uninstall, and then again, select here, and then say uninstall. And so they're all on top of each other, kind of in a big group. Again, you should have three stacks. Question label in progress. No matter what kind of question you ask your players, you'll need to display a label. Add a label to the top of the view, then use the new... Add new constraints tool to position the label 20 pixels below the navigation bar and zero pixels from the leading and tailing edge margin. In the attributes inspector, set the text alignment to center and set the font to system 32. Set the align attributes to zero, which will allow the label to use as many lines as needed. Change the line break attribute to word wrap. Okay, so again, you're going to go and um, take a label and we're going to drag it towards the top. Then in that label, we're going to add the top of the view new constraints tool. 20 pixels down and zero pixels for the edges. So we've got a constraints. You can put 20 in here. That'll be 20 from the top margin there. And then put zero, zero in there to add the two constraints from the edges. And then it puts it kind of in there, but we can go over here and say center. So it's in the center right there. Then they want you to put 32 in here for the system font. Nope, that didn't work. How about we just type it in 32. And then zero for the um, lines. And then it says what? Word wrap down here? Word wrap for the line break, right? 
So again, I put a label in there, added constraints, 20 pixels down, 0, 0. Then I changed the system font to 32, centered it, put 0 in there for the lines, and did a word wrap right here for line break. That's on page, at the bottom, page 415. And they kind of show you that on page uh, 416. Players often like to know how far along they are in the quiz. Search for a progress view in the objects library and add it to the view. Use the add new constraints to, tool to position the progress view 20 pixels from the top and zero from pixels from the leading edge and margin. So I don't know how to search for progress view. P-R-O-G-R-E-S progress view. And put it underneath there, huh? Oh, they went at the bottom, right? So again, the same kind of constraints that you might want for the other ones where you actually go and add new constraints. So right here, we can put 20 at the bottom here because it's from the bottom. Zero in there, zero in there. And then hit add three constraints, and it puts a progress bar at the bottom. Did you see that on page 416? Did you find the progress view? We? Oui? No? I didn't find the progress view? Uh, I'm on page 417 now, so uh, now comes the hard part. So you have all your artwork. So if you remember back to the days when we were uh, making the, uh, the oh, I can't remember the one, where we had to make a Swift file that, that contained all the logic, right? So they're going to make a Swift file that contains the logic of this. And so it's not going to be attached to a view controller. It's just a Swift file that contains all the main structs and things like that, OK? so. Um, so far, the lesson you've designed a view controllers in the storyboard. You've got three view controllers. We, you know, they're all connected already, subclasses already. It's now time to create the structure that holds the question data and update the user interface based on the values of each question and its answer. Once the data has been laid out, you can update your user interface based on which question is being displayed. Begin by creating a new file called question SWF. So again. This is not necessarily going to be linked to any of the uh, interfaces. It's just going to be a new Swift file. So I'm going to I'm going to hide all these things and kind of move them together. Why is this label? Okay, we got that. We got that. Okay, everything seems fine so far here. So uh, again, I'm going to go under File New File File New File, and we're going to make a new uh, Swift file. This one, not a Coco Touch, but a Swift file. Okay, with a little bird ear. I guess you knew that Swift meant is a bird, right? Is it a Swift a bird? I'm going to say next. Then we're going to give it a name like they told it to call it, call it question data. Question data. And then make sure it's going in your folder, of course. It should show up over here. Uh, in this case, you have the foundation that is put in there. And so uh, for your personality quiz, you can create this a new file, new command, and then new bar Swift file. It's safe to assume that every question will have text to represent the question itself along with an array of answer objects. Since your quiz can, can use three different types of input methods, you'll create an enum that describes the question and response type, single answer, multi-answer, and range response. An example of the structure is below. So then you see there's a struct for question, and of course one of them will be a string, the other one will be a response, and the other one says answer. Okay, so uh, I guess we can start. Struct question curly bracket, and it, then of course we have a variable called text, and it's going to be a string. Then we're going to have a variable called um, type, and that will be response. 
on a type. And then we'll make another variable called answer. And this has curly brackets, most likely. Oops, curly brackets. And it doesn't like response type. Because we've never defined it yet, I guess. Is that what they're trying to say? Use of undeclared type response type. Uh, what's that? Yeah, I'm sure we're going to add it later. Enum uh, response type again. And then they have curly brackets for that. And then a case statement single. Spell single right if you can't. Did I spell it right? No, I didn't. Multiple and ranged. <laughs> Every answer corresponds to a, a result type. In the animal example, suppose you ask which of these foods do you like the most, and the possible answers are steak, fish, carrots, and corn. I guess these are not vegetarians here. <coughs> Each response corresponds to, to a dog, rabbit, and turtle, respectively, and therefore to a particular emoji. If the answer property was an array of strings, there wouldn't be a simple way to associate the answer with a particular result. Instead, the answer struck will have a string to display to the player and the type property that ties the answer to a specific result. So again, you know, each each one that they click on will, will correspond to the to the word, right? That's basically what they're saying there. So uh, <coughs> in this case here, so again, they have a struct for answer. <coughs> Round brackets, of course. So they have another variable. They're using the same variable text. String. Then they have a variable type, animal type. And then they need to define animal type. So down here we'll define animal type by going down to enum animal type and of course we'll say character round brackets and then they do a case so if they click on or, or if the word relates to dog you will see the dog emoji. Again, to bring up the emojis under edit, emoji, and symbol. And we're going to look for which one? This one, the happy dog. There he is. He's happy. He's got his tongue out, right? Cat. And we're going to do the, uh, where'd my emojis go? Where's the cat? Oh, that's this one. <coughs> and then we have, what's the other rabbit? And where's my emojis? This one's a rabbit. And then the last one would be <coughs> turtle. And that one will be um, the turtle, 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 turtle. There. What are we doing right here? Defining our enums? Uh, the enum is uh, um, uh, a way of um, I think it's a, it's making a relationship depending upon which one you click on, right? If I click on the dog, then the word dog will be related to that, right? Because the case 
the case statement is referring to what you've actually clicked on and then make a relationship between that and, and something. So I'm assuming, this is because I haven't gone forward, I'm assuming that... I'm it, actually just asking about how you, I, mm -hmm. we just seen that so long ago. Yeah. This, this part confused me. Yeah, I understand. And then the next part where they add the definition, I don't even, I couldn't even figure out what that was. So I, I think it's a way of storing, right? If you click on dog, it's relating to the word dog, right? So it's equivalent. Yeah. It's so, so the case... say that. access it? So if I say dot dog. Char character is still a type, right? Character is a built-in ASCII code. Each ASCII code or whatever it is yeah. re is represented one or multiple images in it. Because Emoji, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I say dog, dot dog, dot dog. It'll relate it'll, to the it'll, emoji. It'll tell me, it'll do that. Yeah. It's a, making a relationship between the word and the emoji. And okay, but I found some places where it actually printed the word dog as confusing. Mm -hmm. I just, this whole part was just confusing how they, they throw a bunch of structures and complex, a complex data thing. It's just, mm -hmm. exactly as you're saying, it's confusing. I, 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 I think we should just, let's continue and we'll try and figure it out. So again, if we look down below there, typical at the end of the personality quiz, the player receives some text about the outcome of the quiz. Since you've already defined an enum to represent each personality type, or in this case, animal type, you could include a definition property that will be pre present, presented as the label as the result screen. So if they click on dog, and you'll notice down below there, case dog, then we're going to make a quote that po pops up that says, hey, you're you're cool, you know, you're incredibly outgoing, you surround yourself with people and love and joy activities. So um, it's a way of, of um, associating the label. It's the way to bring up the text, I guess is what I'm trying to say, the appropriate text. So uh, if you come down here to the bottom down there where the enum is, so uh, inside there, um, they're going to make a definition. As you can see there, it's called variable definition. Um, which is going to be a string with round brackets. So then uh, a switch statement will then uh, um, basically tell it to um, whichever one they choose. Let's say they click on the dog, right? It, how it knows which, one, which label to to display depends upon um, what you associated with. So if they click on dog, which is the word dog, then it comes down there to a switch, and it's switching for the case dog, and then it's re gonna return a value, which is the quote that's in there, and put it into the label. So what do we got? Variable definition string, you got a switch, which is basically saying to update self, and then a round bracket, and then, of course, if they choose the word dog, dot dog, then make yourself a nice quote. Um, you're really a dog person. I'm not going to write all the other stuff out, okay? And then they're going to do another case. Case. Nope, no, lowercase case, case. And then that's going to be cat. And we're going to make another quote in there. And uh, what are cat people? Very nice people. This person is a good person. Cat people are very nice people. And then we do another case, of course, for each other uh, animal. In this case, is a rabbit. So we'll put in our quote in there. What are rabbit people? You run fast. <laughs> you run fast. And then the last one is a case um, turtle. And then, um, oh, you got to put a dot in there. And then what does our turtle do? Um, you are cool as a cat. 
cucumber. C U M B E R. Cucumber. There you go. Turtles are cool as cucumbers. Oh, we got to return. We forgot to return on each of those, didn't we? So, <clears throat> so let's put a return on each one. Forgot to return. So the, in front of that, you need to pull the data out. So basically, you're you're saying if they click on this, then display that. If you click on this, then display that. If you click on this, then display that. So on. So the, the case statement makes it easy because it can recognize what the person clicks on. So take a minute. Uh-oh, I still got an uh, after here, huh? Forgot my colon, colon, colon. There we go. So let's save in case we blow up. I've been having computers crash on me lately. I don't know. Anybody have high Sierra? Doesn't seem to be as stable as Sierra for me. This is Sierra, so it's stabler. But I put high Sierra on my computer, and it, it doesn't seem to be as stable as the Sierra. I don't know if you've recognized that. I don't know. I've had some of my Adobe programs crashing on me. And then I had to update. So once I updated High Sierra, then I had to go and update the Adobe because they weren't compatible. The Adobe that I had wasn't compatible with that. So they, you had to update the Adobe, and then I was having problems with that. I'm just pointing that out in case you run into that. Um, but I'm still having issues with memory. Um, I don't know, High Sierra or something with the memory. It seems to be running out of RAM and crashing. Let's try and put it in. Again, it's going to go... Um, below here a little bit. Let me let me put some lines in here so we can move up a little bit here. And uh, um, are we still inside um, character type? Is this after everything? We're using questions. Where's questions being typed? A question is here. So we have a, a, a type text which is a string then you have a type response type then you have an answer and so uh, this one I guess is single single answer so you're taking this information up here in this struct and adding some data to it so there's a variable question with an S, and then um, of course we have to define it again. Does this go in the view controller? I don't know. Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to have to add, you're going to have to make outlets for all of that. You have to make outlets for everything. So what, you're saying we should put this in the view controller? Yeah. Okay. The question one. Under the view did load? or up at the top after the view controller up here. So up, up there you think? What do you think? 
I think they're just saying that you're going to call it from the view controller. What's that? Okay, let's try it then. Did you put it in there, Susan? Where did you put this this part on page 419? At the top, at the top of the view controller up here? Under where it says UI view controller, question view controller? Okay. Yep, put the question mark in there too. I'm just going to copy this one. I'm not going to make it easier. So we have steak. What else do we like to eat? Fish. And that's going to be cat. Cat likes fish. Yes. And then carrots. Start making noises over there. Rabbit. And then corn, corn. Turtles like corn. Turtle. Turtle with one T. And then Question. Text. Which activities do you enjoy? Say what? Type? Just copy the same. Yeah, geez, it's the same as this right here. Nope. Right here. They just change the different type to the different ranges. The range, you can say multiple now. Multiple choice. And <clears throat> we like swimming. It's a turtle. And then 
sleeping. That's me for sure. Cat. Cuddling. And that would be a rabbit. And eating. That would be a dog. We can copy this whole thing again. Last one. And how much do you enjoy car rides, really? And this is a range. This is the slider. Of course, the very last one is you don't like car rides. This is almost like Dr. Seuss. I dislike them. I like them with eggs and ham. Little, little nervous. <laughs> so that's all of it. So it doesn't like my type text at the top. Type text. Did everybody get the same error message as I did? It's a round bracket. Maybe I put answers instead of answer. Answers. Answers, no. Answers. Answer. Answers. Answer, not answer. Here? Yeah. I don't know. I hit fix. It didn't seem to change anything. It's no member multiple. Hey, we all make mistakes. Okay. Come on, fix. Uh oh. Didn't I type it right?
multiple, no. I'm gonna copy and paste it. Response type has anything? Here. Come on. I think it cleaned itself up. Oh, didn't. I just copied and pasted. Now that you've created a list of questions to draw from, you'll need to keep track of which ones your, your app is has already displayed and to calculate when you displayed them all. One technique to, is to use an integer as an index to the questions collection. This integer will start at zero and you'll increment the value by one after a player answers each question. So we need to keep track of, I guess it's kind of like gameplay, right? How many times do they play the game? Add a property called question index to your question view controller. And they haven't played yet, basically. As the player moves from question to question, you'll need to show the correct stack view and to hide the other two. But before you can write code that changes the stack view visibility, you'll need to create the necessary outlets and actions. Open the main storyboard and select question view controller. Then open the assistant editor to the question view controller Swift. Alongside the storyboard, control drag the single answer stack to the definition question view controller class. Then release the mouse or track pad to begin the popover. Verify that connection type is set to outlet, then enter single stack view in the name field. So it looks like they're doing that at the very top up here after the view controller here. So I'm going to move this stuff down a little bit. Again, we're going to go to the storyboard file and then hit your Olympic torch here. And so then we can, uh, I'm going to need to move some stuff around here. Move some stuff around here. Here we go. So uh, we want to take the um, stack view. Assistant answers are alongside the story, but control drag a single answer stack view to the definition of the pop class and release the mouse. So uh, the first one. Oh, they're, they're actually dragging from the thing over here, aren't they? No, I see that. Can I go back? No, I don't want to go back. I don't want this. How do I get this sidebar back? Anybody remember? Really? I shouldn't have hit it, huh? Okay, so um, I don't know. How, do you know how to get this back? I, I lost my 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 list. Which one? View. This one. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, here we go. So uh, they want you to drag from the stack view into here. So again, we're gonna do Control Drag for an outlet, and then we're gonna call this one what? Multiple, oh no, this one's going to be, what is the first one? Let me cancel that for a second. Hopefully that doesn't make a mis make a problem. Let's first, this is button, 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 button. So this is the, what, they're asking, um, open the assistant editor question, as I sort of control drag the single stack view to the definite of the question view controller class, then release the mouse and try to bring up the pop over. Verify your connection type as outlet to enter single stack view into the name field and click connect. Repeat these two steps for entering multiple stack view and range stack view. So, um, of course, this one is the multiple stack view, and this one is the range stack view. Okay. So I got it now.
So again, control drag. It's an outlet, and this is going to be called question view controller. Uh, this is called what? Single stack view. Single stack view. And then hit connect. And then this one is going to be control drag. This one's an outlet. This is multi multiple. Multiple stack view. Did I spell it right? I think I did. Okay, and then the last one is this one. And this one is um, range. stack view ranged with a D okay so we have all three different stack views uh, with outlets you can roll over the little plus and see what happens and everything should be included in the rollover there right because all the parts are inside that stack view Next, create a reusable method called update UI that you can call before displaying each question to the player. You should call this method in the view did load to set the proper interface for the first question. So again, we're going to go back to um, this window. I don't know if I can move this around here. And I guess we're going to go down here to the view did load underneath there. And then uh, we're going to have to update the UI basically. So to update the UI, we're going to do the um, super view did load, and then you'll see that you have update UI inside there. Update UI, round bracket, round bracket. Of course, mine doesn't look blue. Why does theirs look blue and mine not blue? Okay, I don't know. Oh. Then we have to make a function for that. That's why. Let's get rid of this. It looks like they, they're going to make... Where do, where do you think we put this function at? Below the curly bracket? The update UI method is responsible for updating a few key pieces of the interface, including the title and the navigation bar and the visibility of the stack views. You can use the question index property to create a unique title, for example, question four in the navigation item for each question. With the stack view, it's easier if you hide all the three stack views, then inspect the type property in the question to determine which stack should be visible. You can use the question index property to conjection with the questions collection to access the particular question. So again, they're going to hide each one. And so you'll notice it says single stack view dot is hidden equals true and so on. So I guess it's is hidden is the one that will show or hide that. Next you'll notice it says navigational item dot title question and then of course you'll notice there's a pound sign and then it has the question index. Again, that starts at zero I believe, right? The question index. So they're going to say 1, because you have to add 1 to 0 to get 1, right? Let question, current question equal questions index. Of course, whatever question you're asking, it's going to take whatever number's in there, which is 1. And then they do a switch statement there that says case if it's single. Um, 
hidden is false. This is going to turn it on so you know which one. So by turning it the hidden to true, it turns it off. By turning it from um, hidden to false, it will turn it on. Do you see that? So false would be on, true would be off because they're using is hidden. Do you see that? So single stack view dot is hidden and that's the true and uh, I spelled single wrong again single and let's copy this No, I don't want single. I spelled it wrong. And where did I spell it wrong before? I must have spelled it wrong somewhere else. Where did I spell it wrong? Yeah. Where? Up here? Oh, damn it. I don't think I can fix that, can I? Remember, we had all kinds of problems with that. I'm going to have to keep it spelled wrong. Damn. Remember we had to go in here to the control click, huh? I don't think I could just delete this. I can't just... Yeah, I'm going to have to keep going with this misspelled word. As long as it's good, yeah. I, 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 there's nothing I can do about it right now. Yeah. Multi. Oh, multiple. And this one is uh, range. Okay, so that changes the name of the question to whatever the index is, and then we have a let current question. Equal question. And then question index. And a switch statement. Case. And then, of course, my misspelled here. So we're going to change these to true. So you can pretty much copy this, I would say. And you're just going to, you're basically telling it to be true. Or false here. And then another case. And then 
in another case. And these are false. And this is false. And it doesn't, there we go. Build and run your app. You've set everything up properly. The stack view is visible, should correspond to the first question you defined in the questions property. Try reordering the question to test each interface. Okay, I don't know. We'll see. It says run. Cross your fingers. Don't. It doesn't like the update UI. I found nil while unwrapping it optional. So I need to add a question mark to that explanation point. I don't know, anybody else get an error too? Or is it just me? Well, it doesn't like the fact that it doesn't have a, um, this optional doesn't have a value. It says une unexpected found nil one or applying an optional value. I'm, I'm assuming it's the single stack view is hidden, the first line. Well, let's put the outlets in because the outlets actually have explanation points. It says the interface on your question screen works, but you still need to update the button titles and label text. It doesn't like the fact that single stack view doesn't like this. Yeah, this has an explanation point. Let me copy this. Did I really spell it wrong that bad? I mean, it doesn't give me an error there. Above it or here? Okay. Now I'll try it. Arrow? Okay. See where the little blue arrow on the bottom is like anything else? Oh, really? Click on that again. Yeah. Next one, no. No, no. Click, click that again, the arrow again. Nope. Click that. Now click the one right to the right of it. Yeah, it doesn't okay. like... It fails there. It doesn't like the single stack view. I must have spelled it wrong somewhere else. Does everybody else get an error? There's a little search uh, magnifying glass above your mouse. 
Yes. Yes. And type in any of the words that you're looking for, like S G N L E. If you're looking for S G N, no, you're right. S I G for that. See if we can find it. Yeah, it's my view. Yeah, okay. It's just, I, don't see what, I don't see a problem with it. Okay, let me try. And I don't think it knows it uses spell book, which <laughs> So I can't just delete yeah. it here. Well, you can. Now, now go. But there's the other spot. Now go to your um, storyboard where you created your label created from there now. See, this is spelled wrong here. Now, now go, go, back, go, go over to the ruler on the far far right. Okay, let's try it one more time here. Let's not spell it wrong again. Single view, right? I think it was single view, right? What's it? Sting single stack view. Single stack view. Outlet single stack view, UI stack view, connect. And then I can go down here. And this should be. Single. Oh, I spelled it wrong again. Sing, sing. We spelled this damn word. I see the error. Now it doesn't like it at all. Okay, with correct spelling, let's see what happens now. No, still get the update UI. Oh, I spelled it wrong here. No. Yeah, that's wrong. No, that's right. No, no. GL. GEL. No, LE. Single there. GL. GLE. 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 Anybody else get the error message? You guys all got an error message? No, no just me? Just me, huh?
Try again. No. Okay, now it's not even doing anything. Let me save. <laughs> 